Recording in progress. We are live. And uh, we are recovering from our July 4th celebration. And uh, most of our team is entering the beginning parts of phase two of the metabolic restoration process. And phase two is about testing higher activity levels consistently, and then testing out calorie deficits. Now, activity levels measured in time, time spent, walking, you could measure that in step count, you could measure that in exercise, uh, extra strength training, uh, exercise uh, workouts that you get in each week, right? But you only want to make a change that you can perform consistently. So if you're somebody who is very time uh, time crunched. You don't want to commit to an extra hour of strength training every week. You don't have the the bandwidth, the time resources to make that happen. So you want to you want to make changes at the margin and in as small as increments as you can manage, and uh, make it the most easy thing that you can do to sustain. And today. I want to give you a, a little bit of an example demonstration of how to do that with your calories in a way that uh, creates a energy de deficit, but keeps your protein high enough so that when you begin to lose weight, you don't lose muscle. Because as we go through this process, we want to keep the muscle and we want to lose the fat. So. What I have here is a, a, a calorie deficit chart. So my example here is for uh, a person weighing 100 pounds. And what would that look like if they weighed 110, 120, 130, 140, 150? But let's start with 100 pounds because the math is super easy to, uh, to compare and to, to measure with. So if I'm eating, uh, if I'm a 100 pound person and I'm exercising twice a week with a, a, a strength training program, um, like similar to the one I provided you with or your own, and I am walking every day for 30 minutes, uh, up until this point, I've been eating about 1,200 calories a day. So my body weight times 12. So what I'm going to do is, for phase two, I'm going to experiment with dropping the calories by 10 or 15% to something that's a little bit more of a deficit or creating an energy deficit. So if I weigh 100 pounds and I multiply my body weight times 10, that's 1,000 calories of food to eat every day. Now, I don't know very many 100-pound people, but again, this is a simple math. Uh, makes the math more sim simple. So if I eat 100 grams of protein, it's roughly 500 calories from protein, a little bit less, but I've created a little wiggle room for um, what ifs in real life. I have 200 calories from fat, so it's about 20 grams of fat. Uh, with a little wiggle room, and about 300 calories from carbs. So the 100-pound person has about 50% of their calories coming from carbs, 20% uh, coming from fat, and 30% uh, 50% from protein, 20% from fat, and 30% and from carbohydrates. That will put them in a calorie deficit if they're moving 30 minutes a day, and strength training twice a week. And it will also allow them to preserve their muscle. So all I did was multiply my body weight times 10. And I made sure I got roughly my body weight in grams of protein, a little bit less than that, but that's okay. And then I evenly distributed the uh, carbohydrates and fat from those uh, from the remaining calories, which 
gives me a pretty sustainable, you know, form of energy. And you could you continue this chart as you know far up as you want to go. But let's say I weighed 150. Well, I'd have around 140 grams of protein, about seven, which is about 750 calories. Again, I'm going to keep my fat calories a little bit lower, but I'm going to increase my carb calories because I have more calories I can eat during the day to sustain the movement and the lifestyle of a 150 pound person. That puts my total calories at 1500, my carb calories at 550, and my fat calories at 200. And that is basically taking, you know, a little bit more than 20% of the calories from phase one and bringing them into phase two. Uh, so I'm dropping down, I'm creating a, a little bit of a cut in, in phase two as we do our preparation for our adaptation phase. So you can experiment with this 20% cut. You can plan, you're using your macro calculator, you can plan what it would be like to eat that way. And then you can eat for three or four days in a calorie deficit while you hold the line on your activity, your physical movement and your training. And you'll, you'll get the feeling of what it feels like to be in an energy deficit while you're preserving your muscle tissue. And so of course, working on your cardiovascular goals and all the other, you know, life goals that you have for your health, because we're worried about health span as much as we are worried about lifespan and our body weight. So, what this allows you to do, if you, if you, you know, play this out, this allows you to create a deficit, create a deficit menu, and uh, and apply that to your physically active week and see how it feels in your body. To, to be at a calorie deficit while you're still active. And this will familiarize you with how hungry or how tired or not hungry or tired, or how energized you might feel with this combination of nutrients and activity. And this allows you to figure out what your friction points are. If you feel better, if you feel more energized and more focused when you do that, then you're on the right track. If it feel if you feel challenged or this feels a little bit too much, then uh, you've got to go back to phase one and figure out what parts you're missing. Once you've got the recipe right with your activity level, you know, doing strength training at least twice a week. The reason why I say that and I'm repeating it is because you don't want to get into a calorie deficit and start losing weight without doing resistance training. Because you will, your body will not keep the muscle on as you start to lose weight. And you will, you will still lose weight. You're just going to lose the wrong weight. And you're not going to feel as good. You're not going to look as good. You're not going to have the energy. Um, that muscle mass that you work so hard for, you want to, you want to preserve it as you go. And if you're new to strength training and resistance training, well, it's a great time. You can, if you're a beginner, it's a great time to build muscle and burn fat at the same time, which is how uh, I've helped people be so successful for the last 20 years, because the first six months of your resistance training program, you, it's a little bit easier to put on muscle than in the rest of your exercise career. So uh, you want to, you know, you can get the best of both worlds for a very limited time. So your mission for phase two is to Increase your activity and decrease your calories and figure out what it feels like to do that. Play with that. If you can go for five or six or seven days, so a whole week in phase two in that diet, with that diet and that exercise routine, then you will, you will feel what it feels like to be in the adaptation phase and the performance phase. And if it feels good, you might be ready to move on to phase three, which is ramp it up. And phase three, uh, if you can stay at a deficit and continue to exercise, you can get into a, a, a cut phase for somewhere around eight to 12 weeks and feel pretty good as you 
burn fat and build muscle. So that's the, that's the strategy. The, the tactics are uh, specific to you. I like, you can see by my chart, I like carbohydrates. So I have preferred in my, um, in, in my calorie deficit chart, I've preferred calories from carbohydrates. So that I can feel strong, I can sleep better. I'm I'm very active. But if you're somebody who likes a little bit more fat, you can change these ratios so that they're a little bit more balanced. And there's nine calories for every gram of fat. There's four calories for every gram of carbohydrates. So you can customize these ratios to you as you plan out your deficit for the week, so that you feel good. You're eating the foods that you like. And you don't feel that stressed about it. And there is not really a superior, the superior strat, the, the superior tactic is the one that makes you feel the best. So for me, I feel better. I sit better with more carbs, but uh, Pam might like a little bit more fat. She might like avocados. She might like salmon. She might like those types of things. So uh, it, you when you want to make these ratios work for you. So uh, if you don't like the low fat, then go ahead and um, pick that out. But you do have to stick to the ceiling of calories because if you're not in a calorie deficit, then you really don't know what it feels like to be in a program that helps you burn fat and build muscle because you're, you're not actually uh, in a deficit and you're not actually losing. So, so trust to the, so use these multiples for your body weight and your calories and then keep the protein the same. And then adjust the fat and the carbohydrate ratios to make yourself happy as you go through your, your deficit. So that's your homework. Find the ratios that work for you. Find the foods that work for you, but stick to the deficit and keep the activity levels high as you, as you go through phase two. Once you find the right food and the right sequence that makes you feel good, then you're ready to start phase three and start your, what I call the sprint, but bodybuilders and athletes who are competing call uh, a weight cut. And you want, you want to be on a weight cut for as short as period of time as possible. Eight weeks is the sweet spot to get most of the gain, the benefits from the cut. And, uh, you know, up, up to 12 weeks. But the longer you're on the cut, the harder it is to lose. So you don't want to spend that much time in the calorie deficit because it's diminishing mm-hmm. returns the longer you're in it. So that's the, that's the strategy and those are the tactics. What are your questions about this process, phase two, and uh, about health in general? Are um, protein calories for uh, protein, it's for calories also? That's correct. Okay. Good question. Okay. I think I'm doing pretty good. I'm in weight training three to four times a week and then walking and Peloton. So I just need to get my calorie deficit thing going on. Yeah. What are your, what's your target calories right now, Pam? Uh, you know what? I haven't really been tracking it, Josh, since we got back from the road trip and um, getting back into the gym and hitting the ground running at work. It's been bad. I'm lucky if I eat during the day, so I'm working on that. Well, I do recommend eating. I don't know if we covered that yet. I do recommend eating. I would. I wouldn't do this program with uh, just water. I would also add food. Yeah, trust uh, me, the water diet's not for me. <laughs> so, um, but this is you know I think that's. It, it, it's good to be honest. You want to be precise. Um, you shouldn't, it doesn't feel good to be in a deficit. It doesn't feel that good to lose weight. If you've ever lost weight before, it feels, it feels good for a little while, but the longer you're in a, a calorie deficit, the longer you're in a cut, um, it, it, it's, you feel, I feel fatigued. I feel brain foggy. The, uh, the longer I spend in that uh, state, 
Um, I'm in a calorie deficit right now. So I'm, uh, I, I, I preferred my calories for the morning so I could be less of a, a goofball uh, while I was on this call. But realistically, you want to you, you want to minimize the time that you spend there. So you want to maximize your meal plan and you want to be very precise about what you need to get in that deficit and stick to that. Then when you're finished with the deficit, we'll talk about this in phase three. How do we end the cut in a, properly so that we don't gain the weight back? Uh, which is nine tenths of where people uh, people mess up. But you you want to be able to have your all your ducks in a row so that when you reach the end of your weight cut, whether you hit your desired goal weight or your goal or the amount of time that you're going to spend in there, that you uh, back out of the diet in a in a slow manner so that you stay at the same weight even as your calories go back up. But we'll talk about that uh, in a in the coming weeks. Question. Can I just, yes, yes. Um, so just so I hear you correctly. So if we now embark on this phase two, you're saying we don't want to do it more than eight weeks, right? Um, is that right? You're, you're a step ahead. Phase two. Oh, oh, is okay. Complete Phase two is complete when you do seven days at a calorie deficit oh, without sacrificing any, any of your exercise. What you're identifying okay. is the exercise plan and the diet that makes you feel good to be in a deficit that you can do uh, without, um, w w without, uh, uh, without any mental gymnastics. So if you've only had one or two workouts in a row, then, mm -hmm. then I would wait until you've got some more of a rhythm dialed in. And then if you can do a couple workouts a week and meet your 30 minutes of walking, then yep. do that with a calorie deficit for seven days. And that's your checklist. That means like, okay, I know what I'm eating and when, I know when I'm training and how. And then if anybody has an account, it would be can back off. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll mute you. Then you can back it off and then uh, you can set your timer to begin when you are ready to do it for eight weeks in a row. So first step is seven days. Oh, okay. Okay. Then, then you're, you've confirmed that you have a process that works and you're ready to begin. Now, you could do it for a whole seven days. You could say, oh, I really like this. Let's start. Okay. Week two. Okay. We'll do it for eight more weeks after that. So you could do nine weeks uh, total. So you can go right into it if you're feeling good, if you're feeling confident. Yeah, yeah, no, not yet. Um, okay, so that's that's good. You cleared that up. But the next question, can you uh, just make the conversion for me again? Because I've been measuring in grams of the macros, not calories. So when you say, for example, 700 calories, what does that roughly translate to in grams? Um, like protein, on the, protein, protein. Depends on the food. So here, I'm going to give you. So uh, I'm looking at the one, at the 700 calories of protein would translate to what? Under the 140 uh, weight. Yeah. So what it is, is that's uh, roughly 140 grams of protein. Whoa. So I'm like in a deficit already. What? Okay. I got to reevaluate this whole thing. And then what about the fats and the carbs? So 200 calories of fat well uh first of all before we go further how, how many grams of protein are you eating a hundred okay here i'm going to put in parentheses what you're doing oh no i've got a formula here i'm going <laughs> to copy yeah did i copy formulas here oh i did okay i can mess these up though nice all right so you're doing a hundred, mm -hmm. and that means that you are roughly eating a uh, hundred times five. So you're roughly eating five hundred calories of protein. Okay, mm -hmm. and then um, how many grams of fat are you eating? Forty. Forty. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you're. 
doing 40 grams mm -hmm. and that's roughly four times nine uh 18 36 360 mm -hmm. okay and then 120 cards 120 and then uh four is 480 okay oh my so, gosh i'm way under here Yeah, well, um, how are your how are your energy levels doing? <laughs> it's been pretty good, actually. My two p.m. nap has been cut out. Um, yeah, I go to bed. My sleep schedule has been great. Like I get a good seven to eight hours. Um, yeah, I'm feeling pretty good. I I have to say. But when I'm looking at your chart, I'm like, am I severely un malnourished? I mean, I haven't no. been losing weight. I haven't, I haven't been losing weight. Let's put it that way as either. That was one of my things that going through this process the last couple of weeks, um, it's pretty stable. My weight is pretty stable, right? <clears throat> yeah. No. Oh. That's okay. I've written them down. Um. So you're new to eating this much protein because we troubleshot you yeah. and we uh, increased your yeah. calories. Um, so but when we added, you didn't gain any weight, huh? I did not gain any weight, no. Okay. I'm gonna learn how to use it. But then I've been exercising. But then I've been. But then I've been exercising more. So maybe that they're sort of. I don't know. So, um, you are. Uh, first of all, um, you are already. You're you're really close to. Our uh, our mm -hmm. zone two or our phase two numbers, right? So you're yeah yeah. So so you're you're not in a huge deficit, but um all I want you to do is yeah. well there's a there's a couple of things before before you go into deficit, I want you to you don't have to get to okay so we're recording this good so these are heuristics right. Now, mm -hmm. every single body will respond differently to, to these numbers. Um, I don't, I don't hate any of your, uh, your, your numbers here. But what I want to do is I want to increase, uh, the carbs and I want to increase the protein. So I think at 12 times your, Let's complete this out for phase one. At phase okay. one, our numbers would be, we would be at, twelve times, or we'd be at sixteen eighty. So we have three hundred extra calories. Okay. So, let's say let's let's say it was one hundred and fifteen grams of protein. So we're gonna add, we're gonna add uh, 15, um, so I'm gonna add 75 here. So this is say it's 575. So we're adding protein, keep the fat the same, and then we're gonna add some carbs. Uh, quinoa, oats, what's your favorite carbohydrate? Yeah, I've been doing both of those actually. Um, quinoa and oats, like oats for breakfast, quinoa for lunch. Okay, so I'm going to change this to a hundred, and so we're going to add sixty grams of carbs. If we add sixty, wow, that would be no, it'd be one hundred and eighty. Yeah. 
And then your your number here would be 720. Oh my gosh. Gosh. So if that's 720, okay. Oh boy, okay, so it's 1655, okay. Okay. So, uh, that is your phase one. Those are your phase one numbers. So I would okay. finish phase one because you didn't you didn't add any um, weight, but you got more energy. And mm -hmm. if we measured your waist, maybe maybe it would have gone down. Maybe it would have stayed the same, but. Let's keep going with that. Um, let's keep going with that. And um, make sure you get two strength training days, two, two resistance training, training days, 30 yep. minutes at least, twice a week. That should yep. be, and then your your movement minimum. So, so set that up. Yeah. And, um, and then once you've done that for a few weeks in a row, come back. And, and test out phase phase two, but you're going to get more, basically the crux of the crux of the, let me stop the share. The, the, the crux of the issue that most people find themselves in when it comes to diet and exercise mm -hmm. is they're never really on a diet. They're never really in a, cut they're never really in a surplus they're never really on a strength training program they're never really um they're never really taking a break they're always in between right it's life is just one big gray area and they're not getting the benefits of any of those things yeah so you're already feeling some of the benefits from getting back into alignment so let's t turn the, the heat up let's turn the heat up on that and mm -hmm. and, and improve that um, you know, as I said in my presentation um, uh, in the gym a few months ago, some people could just sit there and change their body in phase one, and they don't even need to go through the esoteric processes to cut and, and, and build and, and do all those other things. Just giving the mm -hmm. body what it needs is oftentimes a big enough stimulus. So ride that out. That goes doubly okay. for you, Pam, since that's the work you want to avoid. I want to see your. I want to see your numbers. I want to see you hit your numbers for a few weeks. Yeah. Sorry, my phone's being weird. I have to go to two different screens to unmute myself. Um, yes, I will. I'm back. Wedding's behind me.